Topping the news at 7, comprehensive coverage of nomination day activities. Leaders of the ABLP, UPP and DNA among dozens of candidates nominated for January 18 general elections. An elector in St. Mary's South raises legal questions over the nomination of UPP's Kelvin Shuggy Simon. ABLP satisfied that Roden Turner has been duly nominated for St. Peter despite concerns from Asset Michael. And Abic makes it clear African tourists who landed recently cannot vote in upcoming elections. Those are the main stories at 7. The news in detail right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, and Garfield Burford, a warm welcome to the ABS Evening News. Thank you so much for having joined us. It's a packed news night. Welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us. In our first story, Prime Minister Gaston Brown has secured a nomination in the constituency of St. John's City West. That's right, Terry. It's a packed evening of news, comprehensive coverage of nomination day activities across Antigua and Barbuda, as only ABS can. First, we have Urso Charles Jr., who spoke with the Prime Minister about his chances for re-election after he got nominated at the Villa School. Here's more. Prime Minister Gaston Brown arrived at the Villa Primary School just before midday Wednesday alongside a jubilant group of supporters. Prime Minister Brown, the incumbent candidate for St. John City West, was duly nominated ahead of the January 18, 2023 general elections. After his nomination, we asked the head of government how confident he is about being re-elected. That's a no contest. I mean, you're bringing someone who obviously is not even capable of running um, a selfish shop to run as a candidate. Um, it's an absolute no confidence. I wouldn't bother to mention his name, but we all know he cannot win. In fact, um, I don't want to sound overly confident, and I'm humble enough to know that anyone could lose. But at the same time, when you bring a non-entity to um, represent the people of um, St. John City West, I think it's an absolute insult to the people of St. John City West. He doesn't stand a chance. He says there is no doubt the ruling ABLP will retain control of government come January 18. He praises the party's state of candidates alongside the party's record while in office. We would have spent a lot of time uh, selecting people of integrity, candidates with integrity, candidates who have the experience and the uh, qualifications, expertise to run a country. Uh, we did not allow, let's say, um, a policy of wash your foot and come. Uh, we have done the work, we have built out the socio-economic infrastructure of this country. We have a number of next level projects, including um, UE5 Islands. We'll be spending $216 million, commencing within a matter of weeks, to further build out that campus. We're taking healthcare, education to the next level. We will um, literally redouble our efforts in order to increase the amount of um, homes that we construct. Already you can see that there's a housing revolution taking place within the country, and you can be sure that we will be scaling up the amount of homes that we produce on an annual basis. As for the party's rivals, Brown did not hold any punches. The bunch of individuals who the UPP literally picked up, um, you know, it's an insult to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. This is 21st century. And if you go back even to um, colonial days, that group of individuals were, would have been un unacceptable to govern this country during that period, much less now in a modern civilization. And I make the point too that when I look at the UPP um, team, uh, they're not ready to serve in the contemporary governance of this country. And as for the chances of the Democratic National Alliance, DNA, and independent candidates, this is the Prime Minister's assessment. I'll be kind. Uh, they're a little pressure group, and they may get one or two votes. Uh, unfortunately, we all lose their deposits. Also nominated in St. John City West were the UPP's Alistair Thomas and the DNA's Colonel Jamil Marine Knight. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. Well, thanks, Ursula. Meanwhile, leader of the main opposition United Progressive Party, the UPP Harold Lovell, was also successful in his nomination bid in St. John's City East. Our cameras caught up with the party leader as he seeks to be re-elected as Member of Parliament for St. John's City East after having been there from 2004 to 2014. Here again, Ursula Johns Jr. Leader of the main opposition United Progressive Party, Harold Lovell, was euphoric as he and his party supporters entered the grounds of the nomination centre, the Princess Margaret School. His mission, to secure nomination as his party's candidate for St. John City East in the next general elections. As he completed the process, he would have been mindful of having previously served as Member of Parliament for the constituency. 
Now, having spent two terms in the electoral wilderness, Mr. Lovell is confident he is back stronger than ever. I served this community for 10 years and I lost favor with some persons and you know, the democratic process is such that they wanted to tell me, look, come better next time. So I have listened and I've been able to build a lot of bridges, mend a lot of fences. I've been able to build the love and right now the love is very strong. We're happy with the turnout and um, I'm sure even at your most subjective best, you would say that the energy is good. Not only is he confident of winning his seat, but Lovell says the United Progressive Party, the UPP, has what it takes to win the January 18, 2023 elections. We've seen a very noticeable shift um, in voter support. We've done a lot of polling and we know where we were three years ago. We know where we are now. So it's just for us to consolidate the gains that we've made and to continue to put a very strong people-centered message to the people. And that's really what we're all about because our mantra is people first. As for what the party will do over the next three weeks to convince the electorate, this is Mr. Lovell's plan. It's full political swing now. And so we are all in and we're very, very happy. The energy is as we expected because it's been a long campaign and we realize that it's a campaign that would have to vary its pace. And so we have been able to vary our pace to test our strength. And we are satisfied that we are at that point now where once we get our rallies going, once we get our other mobilization efforts going, that the energy is going to be very strong, very powerful, and we're going to win this election. The United Progressive Party successfully nominated 16 candidates on Antigua Wednesday. The party is aligned with the Barbuda's People's Movement on the Sister Isle. That party nominated incumbent candidate Trevor Walker as its nominee. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. Thanks, Ursula. Now, in a developing story at this hour, attorneys for a registered elector in St. Mary's South have called into question the legitimacy of the nomination of the UPP's candidate for the constituency, Kelvin Shuggy Simon. Lawyers for Mr. Casworth Aaron say they are instructed that he is a civil servant holding the post of an officer within the Ministry of Education and Sports. The lawyers say they will object to his nomination since the Civil Service Act makes it clear a civil servant is disqualified from membership of the Senate or House of Representatives. Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown wrote a short while ago on his Facebook page, quote, they say they are going to write and backdate his letter of resignation. We are waiting like a loaded gun for them and their trickery, end quote. We'll keep across the story and keep you updated on those developments. Meanwhile, there's more news this, uh, this evening to tell you about the nomination exercise because the Antigua and Brabida Labour Party were in jubilant mood as several of its candidates were nominated this morning. Jamie J. Roche reports on how the process unfolded in St. John's Rural North, St. John's Rural East and St. John's City East. Here's more. A mini motorcade brings Charles Fernandez to City Grove Primary School Wednesday morning. It's nomination day in Antigua and Barbuda, and the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party is intensifying its election campaign ahead of the January 18, 2023 polls. Candidates need 10 registered voters from their constituencies to confirm their nomination and must deposit $500 with the returning officer. Mr. Fernandez is duly nominated as his party's candidate for St. John's Rural North. I feel confident uh, because we have the best leader in the race, if you want to call it a race. We have the best team, and I'm confident that Antiguans and Barbudans will understand that they have too much to lose at this point in time to change the governance of this country. Supporters wave flag to the beat of campaign songs as the Red Convoy makes its way to Clay Hall Secondary School, where incumbent candidate for St. John's Rural East, Maria Brown, confirms her nomination. Today has been an awesome day. I am overwhelmed by the amount of support I've been given, not only by my team, but also by the constituents. I think this term is going to be a great one. The people have the opportunity to vote for representation from the heart, someone who truly cares about them, about their well-being. My first term was geared towards social improvement, and I did just that. 
Next term is going to be an added social improvement and infrastructure work in St. John's Trulli. So we're looking forward to great things moving St. John's Trulli to the next level. The nomination motorcade makes another stop at Princess Margaret Secondary School, where incumbent candidate for St. John City East, Melford Nicholas, makes his nomination official. He too is confident of his victory at the upcoming polls. I think we're putting the work. Uh, the party itself has performed and at the constituency level I've done as much as well. And so I think that the residents and citizens in the community have shown um, their support during the period of time that I've been walking through the community. And so I'm looking forward for another uh, sterling result. Not not a little tidbit about St. John's to the East constituency because it's one to watch. We call it the bellwether because since its inception in 1971, the electors here have selected the winning party candidate. It means that if this continues this year, whichever party wins this constituency will win the election. It's also a relatively small constituency, so the authorities typically declare the winner early on election night. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Also on nomination day, four candidates were nominated in the closely watched St. Peter seat. They are the ABLP's Rodden Turner, the UPP's Tafon Harriet, independent candidate Asat Michael, who is the incumbent, and DNA's Shanila Imhoff. Is more in this report. The candidates alongside their supporters were outing their numbers on nomination day in St. Peter, a constituency which has traditionally been dominated by the Antiguan Barbuda Labour Party. Incumbent Asad Michael was first to complete the process. Michael says he still has the full support of the people in St. Peter. The, although St. Peter's has always been a Labour Party, strong over the Labour Party, over the last 18 years I was able to increase and increase the margin every single consecutive election. That last election I got close to 78% of the vote. You don't get 78% of the vote by just giving out a hammer or a turkey or a Christmas toy at Christmas. You get that high number of the percentage of the votes by being genuine, as I've said, being sincere, and being there for people. It's not about give outs or bribery, it is about assisting people in their time of their need. Nominated as well was ABLP's candidate Warden Turner, confident of success at the polls on January 18. He believes the work to take the seat from Michael is being done despite the popular view. He may have to split votes with the incumbent. I've been on the ground doing the door-to-door, -door, speaking to the people one-on-one. -on -one. I've been sitting on the verandas, I've been standing in the kitchens, and that is not the case. The Labour Party is strong in St. Peter, and the seat will remain with the Antiguan Barbie, the Labour Party. All right. It's a ground game. It's a ground game. I've been on every doorstep, I've been knocking on doors, speaking to people. It's a ground game in St. Peter's, and that's the key to winning this constituency. Labour Party has won St. Peter every general election. It is the Labour Party. It is not an individual. It is the institution. The institution enjoys the support in St. Peter's and that will continue in this general election. The youngest candidate contesting the general elections, the UPP's Sir Chavon Harriet, was also duly nominated. He remains mindful of Michael's and Turner's nomination. Harriet, however, says his age would not prevent him from adequately representing the people. Age is just a number. Um, the reality is I don't think you need any specific qualifications to be a politician. If you love people and you care for people, you'll always represent them. And that's myself. I've been always representing people. I've always showed people that I love them, I care for them. So the people will, will, will in return show me the respect on the 18th and we'll bring home the seat. They will be split, um, regardless of how strong the other two candidates are. Um, they, they, they're relatively strong candidates. They will be split. So um, we, we, we're planning strategically to capitalize on the split. We know the areas that we have to go into day in, day out to maximize the threat that, that we have. The fourth candidate in the constituency to be nominated was the DNA's Chanel Imhoff. She says uh, the St. Peter constituency needs a new leader. I'm running because I believe that we need real change and not exchange. You know, we hear a lot of you know nice words and all of that, but we haven't been able to see that action over the last maybe something years. This, this constituency has never changed hands, and that should say something. So if you have been trying one thing over and over and over and it's not working, then you have to try something new. And that's what you'll get with me and the Democratic National Alliance. This will be a contest sure to grab the nation's attention on election day. Terry Andrew. ABS News. Also here for us on this Wednesday, Helicia Humphreys now reports on the nomination process in some southern and eastern constituencies. 
The Antigua and Popular Labour Party, the United Progressive Party and the Democratic National Alliance nominated their candidates for St. Mary's South and North, All Saints East and St. Luke and St. Paul. These constituencies saw a flurry of political activity early Wednesday. Both the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party and the United Progressive Party headed southward, with confident supporters backing nomination activities. Among the ABLP nominated candidates are Samalwin Joseph in St. Mary's North, Samantha Marshall in St. Mary's South, Colin James in All Saints East and St. Luke, and E.P. Chet Green in St. Paul, who is also ABLP chairman. <laughs> We have been ready for some time now. Um, today, in earnest, um, because the final journey, final paces towards re election in 2023. Um, today's turnout of supporters um, in support of my nomination is indicative of the support we have on the ground in the constituency. Not only in the constituency, but as you notice, we have done it on a zonal basis. We need this government back to continue the excellent work it's doing. As I said this morning to another media house, fact is that this administration has exploited more opportunities than any other previous administration. And, um, and I can speak from a position of knowledge and authority because I served on the VC Bird, Lester Bird and Gaston Brown. The UPP candidates nominated are Jonathan Joseph for St. Mary's North, for St. Mary's South, <laughs> Jamal Pringle for All Saints East and St. Luke, and Dr. Cleon Athil for St. Paul. Meanwhile, the Democratic National Alliance nominated Kishon Joseph for St. Mary's North, Andrew Antonio for St. Mary's South, and Camille Joyce for St. Paul. Kalisha Humphreys, ABS News. Meanwhile, the National Democrat Democratic National Alliance leader, Joan Messiah, was nominated as her party's candidate for St. Philip's South. She will vie for the seat against ABLP's incumbent Lennox Weston and the UPP's Sherfield Boyd. Joan Messiah running in the St. Philip's South constituency, duly nominated with the final of the 10 electors needed to affirm her candidacy. feel good. It's a good day. It's uh, seminal in the sense that it is uh, another historic election. We call it the mother of elections, which are imminent. She tells us she is working to win as she explains she has had a positive impression of the St. Philip's South constituency. There's not the kind of aggression I have felt in previous elections, which I think is a good thing. And it just could be that people from the East are just, you know, more mellow. They are um, perhaps a bit more mature in the politics. And I'm not feeling the divisiveness that I feel in other parts of the country, which I think augurs well for democracy. While her party is not as fancied as its two more established rivals, Ms. Messiah tells us she is confident of her chances here. And I am certainly depending on the people to appreciate and recognize what I tell them. Of all the candidates, Joanne Messiah is the best choice on election day. She insists her party's agenda is best suited for the country. I am a patriot. I am passionate about Antigua and Barbuda. I do not have one smear of corruption uh, against me. And I say to people what this country needs at this moment and going forward, we need spiritual leadership, we need moral leadership, we need leadership that is compassionate, that is all-inclusive, and we need men and women who stand for integrity and who are fully committed to the good governance principles and the DNA as a party. This is what we are offering. Earlier, the ABLP's incumbent candidate Lennox Weston and the UPP's Sherfield Bowen were duly nominated. Our more developments now. This time we go to the sister Isle of Barbuda for nomination activities because incumbent candidate Trevor Walker of the Barbuda People's Movement, the BPM, and the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party's Nacinter Ned were nominated to vie for the Barbuda constituency. The reactions this evening for more Sherilyn Beezer. Incumbent candidate Trevor Walker arrived at the centre with his team and was duly nominated. A confident Walker says he's ready. We're looking forward for the 18th, where we believe that the BPM will be successful. And um, as I said, you know, I just hope the election is free and fair and um, Barbudans come out in numbers to vote in the polls. He says the response to his campaign 
has been very good. People are very much aware what the issues are, especially when it comes to Barbuda. And you know where we stand. We want to ensure that Barbuda um, benefits Barbudans. And um, we're of the view that at the end of the day, that the people will return the BPM candidate to, um, to power. Walker highlights why voters should return him as Member of Parliament on January 18, reminding that for the first time, the land tenure has changed and has been threatening how Barbudans exist. So when Barbudans go to the poll, they must be the polls. They must focus on their future and their children's future and what sort of Barbuda we're going to have if the BPM were to lose and the Labour Party wins in Antigua. So I'm admonishing all Barbudans to go out and vote. Make sure you vote for Barbuda. Meanwhile, the ABLP's Nacinta Ned was also duly nominated to contest the seat. Ned encourages Barbudans to exercise their franchise and vote. First of all, it is your right, and you need to come out and exercise that right. The future of Barbuda depends on you coming out and exercising that right. The ABLP candidate agrees she's young but has a lot of experience having joined the political arena early. In encouraging electors to vote ABLP, Ned says the party has turbocharged the sister island's development. But because of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, we are now experiencing the Barbuda that I've often hear that we can have. We are now having those opportunities with the different projects soon to come, the, the port expansion, the airport expansion. And not only will we be building our economy, but we will also be building and improving our human resource capital with jobs for our young persons in immigration, customs. Ned says she's already negotiating for a better life for her people in a meeting with Prime Minister Gaston Brown regarding the non-payment of wages and salaries. And I even went a step further and I wrote and I said to him, we need to get that cleared off. We need to have a level playing field for Barbudans with the transport board. We brought them over and I've said to him that we need to establish a government complex where Barbudans are now able to get all the services that are afforded to Antiguans and Barbudans right here on Barbuda. She says she's making strides for Barbudans to ensure it's not Antigua versus Barbuda but one nation under what she says is the astute leadership of Gaston Brown and Nacinta Ned. Sherilyn Beza, ABS News. Sherilyn, meanwhile, these were the scenes from the nomination proceedings in St. John's City South, as incumbent ABLP candidate Cedroy Benjamin was surrounded by confident supporters at his nomination. Benjamin received 895 votes in the 2018 general elections to the 355 garnered by the then UPP candidate, the late Michael Burton. He has expressed confidence of retaining his seat. Meanwhile, standard bearer for the United Progressive Party in St. John's City South, Franz de Freitas, was also duly nominated for the constituency. The nomination day exercise at the Mary E. Pickard School went smoothly. And another story here for us. The United Progressive Party candidates gather at the Rising Sun grounds for a meet and greet after being nominated. The party says it is firmly focused on election day, as Rakeem Aparicio reports. We have them! Yes! We have them yes. again. The United Progressive Party will be contesting the January 18 general elections with a slate of 16 candidates. Following nomination day Wednesday, the party joined its supporters at Rising Sun Grounds. The UPP won one of the 17 seats in the 2018 general elections. UPP candidate for St. John's Rural West Richard Lewis says the party has put in the work. We started campaigning right after the 2018 general elections. The morning after the, um, the count, I lost, but I went back in the constituency and I worked all for the full four and a half, five years, making sure that I built a relationship with the people. Challenging the incumbent EP Chet Green for the St. Paul seats is Dr. Cleon Athill. Dr. Athill says the electorate is energized. People have already decided where they're going to vote one way or the other. Um, I am convinced that in St. Paul, they have decided they're going to vote for Athill. One race to watch will be St. John's Rural East. Political hopeful Sean Bird will face off against Housing Minister Maria Bird-Brown. 
Bird's decision to run on the UPP ticket against the party formed by Father of the Nation, Sir V.C. Bird Sr., turn heads back in 2020. You have to look at what's in the best interests of Antigua and Barbuda and what's happening to the Labour Party. Clearly, this is not the Labour Party of V.C. Bird, Lester Bird, etc. This is a different Labour Party. And I believe that my candidacy does say a lot. It shows that the trust that was once established under what was Labour Party is no longer here. Political leader Harold Lovell encourages supporters to remain focused and come out to vote. Time is now. Let us move together with the United Progressive Party. UPP! 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 Forward to victory! Rakib Abaris reporting for ABS News. Thank you so much, uh, Rakeem. Just a quick uh, programming note. Upcoming on Thursday's edition of Antigua Barbuda Today, another powerful, packed program awaits Donna Regis Prosper, who is head of Antigua Crew Sports, as well as Paula Lee, Calvin, uh, sorry, Kevin Silson, and Charlene Lindsay will be among our guests on the program. You can't afford to miss another packed program coming up. Antigua Barbuda Today, of course, more insights, more edification, more education coming up <laughs> tomorrow morning between 6 and 9 o'clock. In the meantime, when we come back from this break, more of the stories that we're tracking for you in the national developments, including this one. Abek explains why African tourists cannot vote in upcoming elections. We'll hear from Elisa Graham upcoming. And later, the Immigration Department responds to some concerns in some sections of the public relating to the arrival of visitors on an African charter flight. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, you'll hear what the Immigration Department has to say about that. Upcoming, stay with us. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Top up on snacks, juices, and household supplies. When you shop at KL Distributors, we promise affordable prices and variety like you've never seen. Have fun with our three for five snack pack. You mix and match popcorn, Cheetos, Doritos, and so much more. We also carry a variety of cereals, granola bars, and healthy snacks. Juices and sodas, we've got it all. Sunny D and Capri Sun for the kids. Ocean Spray, Tropicana, Canada Dry, and Iced Tea. Pick up your favorite household items, supplies, such as laundry detergent and fragrance boosters and other cleaning agents. Free island-wide delivery on orders over $60. We're KNL Distributors and Supplies, now located at Number 3 Painters Industrial Park, Sir Sydney Walling Highway. Caribbean Union Bank for your banking needs. Credit card savings accounts and fees. POS terminals for convenience. Or helping you with small business development. CUB is always here for you. Times are changing, don't you know? CUB, you can bank on us. Whatever you need, just let us know. CUB, you can bank on us. Saving your money and your time with the quality service we provide. Banking the better way every time. CUB, you can bank on us. CUB cares. Call us today at 481-8278. Let's talk. A few years ago, I had no job. Now I have a job. I work at one of the new hotels. Did you know under the ABLP, hundreds of rooms had been added? These hotel rooms created thousands of jobs. Jobs in hospitality, landscaping, construction, maintenance, management, all kinds of jobs. These last few years have been challenging. But in times like these, we need a leadership that we can trust. 
the most wonderful time of the year, and we at Pick a Small have got you covered for all your holiday needs. Looking for something to wear for all your holiday events? Pick a Small is home to numerous stores, carrying the latest styles in men and women clothing, footwear, handbags, fashion accessories, and body shapers for that perfect look. We are not done with you yet. We have the best quality wigs and weaves. We have a beauty salon, barbershop, and spa. When all the shopping is done, sit and sip on some wine or coffee at our cafe or a delicious meal at our restaurant. Pick it small. We are located on Market Street between Redcliffe and St. Mary Street. Come and check us out for all your needs. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a healthy, happy, and prosperous New Year. Thank you for staying here with us on the ABS uh, Evening News. On we go with more national development. Antiguan Barbuda Electoral Commission's public relations officer, Elisa Graham, has moved to dispel suggestions in some quarters that recently arrived African tourists might be here to vote in the upcoming elections. Some 265 passengers arrived on island uh, on Antigua Airways charter flight from Nigeria Tuesday morning. Graham says the tourists could not meet the requirements to get on the election register. In order to be eligible to vote in Antigua and Barbuda, you have to be 18 years, years and older. You must be a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda. And additionally, of course, you must have registered and passed through the process of claims and objections. And these individuals, whoever they are, of course, you know, we do welcome them to our shows. We are tourism destination. However, they will not be eligible to participate in our elections process. She reminds the public that every voter must present their voter ID card to cast their ballot. When you go to the respective polling districts to exercise their franchise, you must present your voter's ID card in order to actually get into the polling station to exercise their franchise. Of course, unless these individuals have a valid voter's ID, and this is very much not possible since they would have just arrived and they would not have passed that process, they are not and will not be voting in our upcoming general election. Meanwhile, there's more now because the Immigration Department says passengers on the charter flight from Nigeria who arrived in Antigua on Tuesday morning satisfied all entry requirements, including declaration of their places of accommodation. Well, the department issued a news release Tuesday evening outlining the chain of events uh, in response to questions raised in a release from the United Progressive Party, the UPP. The department says having met all requirements, the passengers were granted visas on arrival. It says this is a procedure for which the law provides and which is applied in the cases of many visitors from other countries. Immigration officials also indicate that the government collected $25,000 in visa fees from the passengers on this charter flight. The department also says many of these passengers are booked on onward flights to other destinations in the Caribbean and full records have been maintained of their biometric details. Meanwhile, Immigration Minister E.P. Chet Green told ABS News last evening some of the 265 passengers had challenges with their pre-arranged accommodation, but have since been housed in various locations nationwide. Well, so tracking in terms of Terry, we're also tracking this developing story as well. Uh, more now on nomination activities because we can tell you that independent candidate and incumbent for the St. Peter constituency, Asset Michael, insists the ABLP's Rodan Turner was not duly nominated as the candidate because of previous rulings by the court. Uh, the candidate uh, spoke with us, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael, who was nominated as an independent candidate today. He spoke with us. This comes following a letter from former ABLP candidate, Honorable Asset Michael's lawyers, telling the elections supervisor a May 2022 court ruling bars the party from replacing Michael in St. Peter. Now, the ABLP's lawyers have since rebutted that argument through their own letter to the elections supervisor. Meanwhile, we spoke earlier today with Information Minister and ABLP candidate for St. John's City East, Melford Nicholas, about the situation. That's uh, a matter really at the, the level of the, the lawyers for the party. But, um, I think the specific issue that you, you worried about was whether or not there was any residual issues related to the candidacy of um, Rodden Turner. And uh, the party would have satisfied the requirements of the court and would have put aside, the, the injunction would have been put aside because the party would have been compliant through the signature of the general secretary. Since July, um, we had uh, revised the constitution and had had uh, another uh, shot at the, the nomination process for the candidate. And um, Asset Michael would have participated in it, and the outcome was in favor of Rodney Turner. So 
we would have satisfied the court and um, the matter is truly behind us and uh, I think we are moving on from today to the general elections. Also speaking to us today about the possible legal maelstrom was independent candidate for St. Peter and the, that's Mr. Asad Michael. He spoke with us about the situation regarding Mr. Turner. This country has a separation of powers. You have the executive, you have the legislature, and you have the judiciary. And the reason that you have separation of powers is that if any citizen feels disenfranchised, you go to the court. You go to the court for justice. And no one entity or individual is higher than the courts of the country. And if there's a ruling, a high court ruling, that clearly states that there's an interim injunction, no one man, Chet Green, or the Antiguan Bible Labour Party, can disobey that court order. You stand to be in contempt of court. Mr. Warden and Turner cannot be nominated. He cannot legally be nominated until they go back to court and have the permission of the court to vary that order. That order still stands. Now, in other news, away from nomination day, campus officials are pleased the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus rebounded in 2022 from the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic. The university's director of academic affairs, Dr. Curtis Charles, is looking back at a recovery year, says, in looking back at recovery year, says major plans are already afoot for 2023. These include the introduction of several new programs. The Masters of Arts in Children with Exceptional Needs, which is going to start in September 2023. And we are working on right now the MBA program, um, which is going to start in September 2023. These are the programs that when we look at it and the future programs that's in the pipeline, we are thinking about how could we, how could we modify uh, the, the pedagogies and how could we take advantage of some of these blended learnings and 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 project based learning that we that we info, that we implemented during the pandemic international recruits will also be a major focus next year uh, dr charles says a partnership with the ministries of foreign affairs and tourism will soon bear fruit we have a mandate to increase 200 full-time fee-paying international nursing students as well as 200 fee-paying international students for the School of Science, Computing and Artificial Intelligence, School of Business and Management and School of Humanities and Education. Um, and we are working with what we, what we want, what we frame in education tourism. So the Ministry of, of um, Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Tourism has been tremendous in, in assisting us into this um, into this initiative. He says work is ongoing to fully operationalize the center of oceanography and blue economy. And he posits uh, the university is confident this will come to fruition in early 2023. After another quick break, we'll turn our attention to a very quick look at news overseas. You're in tune with the ABS Evening News on this very busy news night. Of course, a lot to talk about in relation to nomination activities. As more information comes available, we'll personally present it to you. In fact, at 10 o'clock, please do join us then, because we'll have an update from ABEC, that's the Antigua Barbuda Electoral Commission, as they give us at least a preliminary summary of the number of candidates nominated and a disaggregation in terms of the 17 constituencies, the numbers in each of those 17 constituencies, all coming at 10 o'clock. Of course, we're keeping across all those developments for you. In the meantime, let's go to a break ahead of News from Overseas next. A piece of the rock? What are your